Hi, good evening, everyone. So, beta, in this class, we are going to go ahead and continue with chapter number five. And I'm going to start with the concept of savings and borrowings. But this is very, very difficult topic. So if you remember, we did this concept of savings and borrowings even in our previous class, right? But when we were doing that in, in chapter number three, but when we did that in uh, that chapter, what happened is that basically we were going ahead and uh, we were talking about something like this. huh? So we mentioned that. So in, in, in this, we mentioned the intertemporal budget line beta and intertemporal budget line had been written like this. That consumption in period two will be what? Income in period two plus income in period one minus consumption in period one. That is my savings. And I was earning some interest rate on savings. This is chapter three's budget equation. Hey, beta? In chapter three, mein we had written this as the budget equation. Now in chapter five, what happens? is that we go ahead and we include the concept of inflation. So what are we saying in this case? In this case, we are saying that there is also inflation in the economy. So, you know, imagine something like this. Let's say that your income is 100 rupees today and price of the good is 4 rupees. So, beta, in real terms, how much will be your income? It will be 100 divided by 4, which will be 25. Right? It will be 100 divided by 4, that will be 25. Now, beta, what happens is, let's say that now I am telling you that your income is, say, 100 only, suppose, in the second period also. But, but I am telling you that price of the good has increased to 5. So how many units will you be able to buy? 100 divided by 5, that means 20. So when your price increases, better your real income decreases. You are able to afford less. Your consumption reduces. So we need to take this also into account. We have to take this into account. So, beta, this is the concept of inflation. So, what is happening in this chapter? We are talking that it is a two-period budget line. You have done this before also, two-period budget line. But just that now I am also including the concept of inflation. Right, beta? I'm including the concept of inflation within this two-period budget time. So, now we have to analyze this whole ki puri cheez ko analyze karna ho. Okay. Now, so beta, I am saying that price of consumption in period one, that is P1, and I have taken that equal to numerator price. One liya hai. beta. Price of consumption. In period two. That is beta P2. So price of consumption. In period two. Kitni ho jayegi consumption in period two. Beta I have to account for inflation also na. So it will be one plus five. So the price of consumption. Uh, you know, uh, of consumption in period two will be P2 and P2 will be one plus pi, one plus inflation. Now, let us assume that person is a borrower. Ye bhi case ho sakta, that person is borrowing money. But it is also possible that, achha, I will do it with both. Let me teach you both today. So let us assume person is a saver. He is saving money. So, but can you tell me what will be his consumption in period two? In period two, he must consume his income of period two. 
So what is this income of period two M two? But I am asking consumption in units now. How much I can consume in units now? So whatever will be my income, it must be also in units. And if I have to find this in units, beta, so I mean this should be my real income. The real income is what? It is income divided by the price. What is the price in period two? One plus pi, na? So real income will be M two by P two. This is my real income of period two, right? Plus, but I might have saved some money from period one. So how much is my savings? My income was M one in period one. I consumed C one. So this is my savings of period one. जो भी मेरी savings रही होंगी period one में, I have those savings. That is in terms of money. I must go ahead and bring it in terms of real value. And on those savings, beta, I would have earned interest rate I. This is the interest earned on the savings. So, इसको मैं कैसे लिख सकती हूँ? This is interest earned on savings. Right, beta? Again, the interest that you earn on savings, you must bring it to the present value. So I must divide this by P two, uh, not present value, real real value. Sorry, ha, huh? real value. I must bring it in terms of the real value. So I must divide this by P two. So, beta, why real terms? Me, why are they coming? Because this is in terms of units. So if the left hand side is in terms of units, it is in terms of the consumption. Then, but the right hand side should also be in terms of units, right? Acha, now one more thing which is important. You will ask me, and why didn't we do this earlier? Because earlier we were assuming P one and P two to be one, but that's not the case now, na? Now I have some P one, I have some P two, so I have to take that into account. So, dhyan se samajh lo. What is this saying, beta? This is your real income. Of period two, so income in terms of units that I can consume. Beta, this is my real savings, and beta, this is my interest earned, but in terms of real, real value. Clear हुई है बात? अच्छा. Now let's take this a little ahead. So beta, if you notice, many times in books it will be less than or equal to. मतलब कंस्ट्रेंट की बात होती है बट इक्वल टू मींस दैट यू आर ऑन दैट लाइन एंड लेस देन इक्वल टू मींस दैट इट इज अ कंस्ट्रेंट तो दोनों ही फाइन है ऑन द लाइन और ऑन और बिलो द लाइन कंस्ट्रेंट अच्छा वन मोर थिंग कैन आई क्लब दीज टू टुगेदर बाय टेकिंग दिस कॉमन आई कैन ना सो हाउ कैन आई राइट दिस सी टू इज इक्वल टू एम टू बाय पी टू प्लस एम वन माइनस सी वन वन प्लस आई अपॉन पी टू राइट बेटा अच्छा वन मोर थिंग बेटा डू यू नोटिस दैट पी टू का वैल्यू इज ऑलरेडी नोन टू मी पी टू की वैल्यू क्या थी वन प्लस पाए सो इंस्टेड ऑफ पी टू कैन आई राइट वन प्लस पाए आई कैन सो बेटा दिस विल बी एम टू प्लस एम वन माइनस सी वन वन प्लस आई अपॉन One plus pi, but this will be zero. Just take one plus pi on the other hand. So one plus pi c two will be m two plus. Just open this up. M one one plus i minus c one one plus i. Can I take this also on this side? I can now. So, beta, what will I get? C one one plus i plus c two. One plus pi is equal to m one one plus i plus m two. This is what I will get. Clear हुई बात? अच्छा, tell me something. Can't I just go ahead and divide throughout by one plus i? I can. I can divide it. I can also divide throughout with one plus pi. I can. क्यों डिवाइड करना होगा आई वॉन्ट टू डिवाइड बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग थिंग्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्रेजेंट वैल्यू राइट 
This is in terms of future value. You remember that chapter we did, na? present value and future value. So, but here, if you notice, this ko ek bar thoda sa or analyze karte hain. If you notice, this is nothing but this is P1 into C1 into 1 plus I plus P2 into C2 is equal to M1 into 1 plus I plus M2. Dhyan se samajhna hai. Beta, this equation, this equation is in terms of my future value. How do I know that this equation is in terms of my future value? Because notice now that I am multiplying my consumption with 1 plus i and income with 1 plus i. So I am asking you what will be the value of my income a after one year. Agar main aaj M1 ko bank mein rakti hoon, if I keep M1 in bank today, it will become M1 into 1 plus i after one year. Similarly, if I keep C1 in bank today, it will become C1 into 1 plus i after one year. So, but this is in terms of future value, isn't it? This is in terms of future value. And P1 to simply 1 hi tha. That is why I don't see here. And P2 kya tha? 1 plus pi because of inflation. So, you see that this is just an equation in terms of my future value. But you remember from the previous lectures, that you can also write this equation in terms of present value. We can write this in terms of present value now. And how do we write it in terms of present value? Very simple. Divide throughout with 1 plus i. So, kya ho jaga beta? P1 C1 plus P2 C2 upon 1 plus i is equal to M1 plus M2 upon 1 plus i. So, if I divide this throughout with 1 plus i, what I will get will be in terms of the present value. Will be in terms of present value. Clear hui baat? Achha, ek aur baat. But P1 to 1 hi tha. P2 kya tha? In 1 plus inflation. Inflation ki wajah se price bad gaya hai. So, but how can I write this as? I can write this as 1 into C1 plus 1 plus pi into C2 upon 1 plus i will be M1 plus M2 upon 1 plus I. Beta, this equation, this is your intertemporal equation with inflation and interest rate. So, if I consider both inflation and interest rate, this is how my intertemporal equation will look. But kis cheez ke liye? I assumed that the person is a saver. Now, we will go ahead and prove that you get the same equation even when the person is in fact a borrower. So, case 2 likhte hai, beta. Person is a borrower. So, but what will happen in case of borrowing money? When you borrow money, consumption and period 2 kya hogi? Sabse pehle jo bhi aapki income rahi hogi. Dekho, again, we will start with the same concept. Consumption and period 2 is in terms of quantity. So, quantity cannot be equated to money. Agar is side pe quantity le rahe ho, to is side pe bhi quantity ke terms mein batana hoga. So, you have to bring it in terms of real value. So, consumption in period 2 will be whatever your real income is of period 2. But you must subtract the money that you have 